Dear friends and dear colleagues, first of all, I would like to thank Jennifer and Priyanka for giving me the opportunity to be with you today to discuss new and or adjuvant therapy for triple negative breast cancer changing paradigms. And I will try to review my opinion some of the most exciting data we have learned from San Antonio 2021 and trying to put into context also with the standard of care we might have uh, today. So again, thank you very much and uh, happy to discuss afterwards if needed. So these are my disclosures. So as you know, triple negative breast cancer is a very heterogeneous disease from different aspects, from the histological point of view, biological point of view, and microenvironmental point of view. And here you can see how we can, or we have in the clinic, different triple negative breast cancer with, up, with, uh, with absolutely different um, prognosis. We have patients with very bad or poor prognosis, especially with invasive, invasive, invasive ductal carcinoma, high grade, or a metaplastic carcinoma with squamous differentiation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But also, sometimes we have patients with very, very good prognosis, even discussing if we have to give or not a chemotherapy patients with apocrine carcinoma, medullary carcinoma, and many other tumor types as well. From the biological perspective, we also have different approaches. We can differentiate between the PAP50 subtypes or the Lehman um, subtype classification, different integrative uh, clusters, so different ways to classify triple negative breast cancer based on biology. And last but not least, we have learned more and more that depending on the microenvironment, the tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, for example, we can increase the possibility the patient to have a pathological complete remission and also the probability the tumor to be cured or to recur. So I think that all these aspects could be integrated to define the prognosis some patients might have. What is very, very clear that in the clinical practice, maybe we could consider the role or tumor, tumor infiltrated lymphocytes of TILS or not, but clearly we have to discuss based on the histological approach if we have to give chemotherapy or not. So preoperative or postoperative chemotherapy in triple negative breast cancer, classically, we have used upfront surgery followed by adjuvant chemotherapy, and we have changed this order basically to try to convert a patient with inoperable disease into operable um, uh, disease. And moreover, we have learned that maybe we could transform mastectomy into a breast conservative surgery. But this was the reason to decide new adjuvant chemotherapy or not. And this was basically based on old clinical trials, some such as the NSVP 18, that observed that giving the chemotherapy in the adjuvant or in the new adjuvant setting basically did not change the prognosis. In my opinion, we should not forget that this was, uh, or these were all trials in general that sometimes they, they, they mixed triple negative breast cancer with all the tumor types. So in my opinion, and this is something that has not been formally tested, I think that if we start chemotherapy as soon as possible, that's why chemotherapy in the new adjuvant setting is a good opportunity. Maybe, maybe would, we could also have better outcomes. Again, this is something that has not been properly tested. Also, some um, benefits of going for upfront chemotherapy is to have more time, for example, for genetic counseling or many other aspects. So after surgery, we might have or pathological complete remission, whichever the definition is, or residual disease. And we have learned today that based on this response, we can tell how to move forward. And we also know that those patients with pathological complete response will have much better outcomes compared with those patients who did not achieve pathological complete remission. And this benefit is, uh, has been observed in both event-free survival and also overall survival. And also, if we had patients with residual disease, we have seen that continuing with different approaches, for example, with continuing with capecitabine 
we might improve again this is free survival and overall survival based on the create x trial in this uh, trial conducted basically in the asian population those patients with triple negative breast cancer and residual disease after neoadjuvant treatment patients who received adjuvant cape did have much better outcomes compared with those patients who did not receive adjuvant cape so again it is not only an issue of understanding which is the prognosis of our patients it's also the possibility to continue with chemotherapy if needed so taking all these aspects into account in my opinion the great majority of the patients should be discussed to offer neoadjuvant approach so this is basically what we have today in patients with pathological complete remission we do not have data supporting continuing treatment afterwards in residual disease we should continue with CAPE or maybe entering the patients, if possible, in clinical trials. Why should we not give chemotherapy after PCR? And these are beautiful uh, data presented by Spring and colleagues at San Antonio three years ago, showing that in patients with pathological complete remission, giving adjuvant chemotherapy did not offer any benefit. So in summary, upfront chemotherapy followed by surgery and we do not need chemotherapy if pathological complete response so another important aspect is that with the new data we have and we will review very quickly um, in a minute we have seen that even with immunotherapy even with platinum compounds or with uh, uh, um, the new toxins those patients who achieve pathological complete remission continues to have better outcomes compared with those patients who did not achieve pathological complete response. So clearly the question here is, how can we improve pathological complete response in triple negative breast cancer? And there have been at least three great group groups of um, agents that have been tested in randomized phase three clinical trials. We have clinical trials with taxanes in patients with triple negative breast cancer, we have clinical trial with DNA damaging agents, agents including platinum compounds or PARP inhibitors, and we have also data with immunotherapy. So just very briefly, remember that napagdaxel, commonly known as abraxane, sorry because of this is not a generic name, but just to remember, napagdaxel has been tested in two prospective randomized phase three trials: the Jepar septo clearly increase in a pathological complete remission. And you can see here the data in triple negative breast cancer, PCR, 26% of patients with common or classical taxanes, 48% with, with napagitaxel, also a nice improvement in, a, in, in event free survival. The p-value was 0 0.06. Nevertheless, in triple negative breast cancer, the, the number of patients was quite limited. And the Edna, the Italian trial, in this trial, we did not observe any benefit adding napagitaxel instead of common taxanes, neither in the old population nor in the triple negative breast cancer setting. I presented this data because in Germany, for example, napagitaxel is a drug which is commonly used in the neoadjuvant setting. But apart from there, it is very, very an uncommon regimen to be used in the early breast cancer setting. What about platinum compounds? We have a plethora of different randomized phase two or randomized phase three trials. The great majority of them showed an improvement in pathological complete remission. And here we have the three most important ones. The Jepar Sexto, CLGB4063, and Brainess. In all of them, we have observed a very nice improvement in pathological complete remission in the range of 15 to 20% absolute benefit. However, it is very interesting to observe that in both of them, in Jepar Sixto, you observed a nice improvement in event free survival, something that we observed very recently at ESMO 2021 by Serene Lloyd, also in the brightness study. In brightness, patients were randomized to receive paclitaxel followed by anthracyclin-based therapy or carboplatin plus same regimen or carbopatin plus velipari plus the same regimen. Velipari did not add any benefit. I will make a comment in a minute. But platinum compounds clearly increase event-free survival. Look at here, the hazard ratio 0 
very, very nice data. Based on the brightness the study, many of our colleagues have incorporated carboplatin in the treatment of neoadjuvant um, setting in triple negative breast cancer patients. Again, this is still a matter of debate. Why? Because the last trial, the second that was presented, the CLGB, showed any no benefit at all in terms of event-free survival. Nevertheless, it's important to remark that this trial also explored the role of, of uh, bevacizumab. So this is, in my opinion, quite dif difficult to interpret if these differences or not were because of platinum compounds and or bevacizumab based approach. So in my opinion, taking into account all this data, basically the brightness uh, clinical trial, platinum compounds is at least a group of drugs that should be discussed in the role of neoadjuvant triple negative breast cancer. Based on this data also, some approaches have explored the role of napagitaxel plus platinum compounds, such as in the DAP trial, with a beautiful pathological remission in the range of 50%, 49% without anthracycines. Can PARP inhibitors add any benefit to platinum-based therapy? Again, looking at the brightness, Beliparib did not show any benefit in the new adjuvant setting. It is true that Beliparib was combined with platinum compounds. However, in the adjuvant setting, we have the Olympia study, where Olaparib plus placebo in the adjuvant setting clearly improved event-free survival in patients with germline BRCA1 and or 2 mutations. And also beautiful data with these drugs, in this case, Talazoparib, in germline in the new adjuvant setting pathological complete remission in the range of 45 to 50% without chemotherapy. So clearly, these drugs are of great interest for patients with germline, BRCA1, and or 2 mutations, maybe for PALV2 as well. So what have we learned from San Antonio this year? So the, uh, our colleagues, Patricia Gans, presented the quality of life data from Olympia, from the adjuvant Olaparib uh, trial. So the primary hypothesis of this um, uh, secondary analysis was that patients treated with olaparib could experience greater fatigue severity at 6 and 12 months than those receiving a placebo. And the trial was considered positive if at least three-point difference on the fat fatigue scale. And here we, have, we can see the results. Basically, Either if Olapari was, was used in patients who received adjuvant treatment or patients who received new adjuvant chemotherapy, we observed a, a, a very small, although significant, difference in terms of fatigue at 6 and 12 months in the range of 1.3 to 1.5 points. So based on the clinical trial design, this was considered negative for the endpoint. Of the trial. What about immunotherapy in triple negative breast cancer? We have different clinical trials. In my opinion, the most exciting one with the data we have today are the new trip, the Impassion 031, and Keynote 522. In the new trip, we did not observe any benefit of adding immunotherapy to napagitaxel and carboplatin based therapy. In Impassion 031 and Keynote 522, both of them atezolizumab or pembrolizumab improved clearly pathological complete remission. Earlier this year at ESMO virtual meeting, Peter Smith presented the event free survival data in Keynote 522 showing that pembrolizumab adding to pachytaxel carboplatin followed by anthracyclines clearly improved event free survival with a delta of about 7.7% at three years. So based on this data, pembrolizumab has been approved in the new adjuvant followed by in the adjuvant setting in the United States. Which data were presented at San Antonio? So basically, we presented the primary and sensitivity analysis definitions on event-free survival. And we can analyze different definitions of basically uh, uh, this is free survival or even free survival. We consider or not secondary primary breast cancer. We consider or not the positivity of the margins after surgery. We consider or not new anti cancer therapy for metastatic disease. 
So we consider different aspects. So in brief, when we observe the data, independently of the analysis we conducted, all the subgroups did have the same results. So it doesn't matter the analysis we did, the evolution map improved event-free survival when combined with chemotherapy. And again, doesn't matter the definition of the event-free survival. Another important aspect we observed is the subgroup analysis. So here we can see that all subgroups benefited the same from the addition of pembrolizumab, but I would like you to pay attention to the following slide. Here, we can see very nicely that in patients with stage 3, but also in patients with stage 2, pembrolizumab improved event-free survival with a hazard ratio in the range of 0 0.68 in the former, 0 0.60 in the latter. So, in my opinion, based on this data, pembrolizumab should be considered for patients with both or with either stage 2 or stage 3 triple negative breast cancer. So, anything else from San Antonio? And I would like to spend my last maybe five to six minutes talking about this important C-Track TN trial. Basically, Nick Turner from UK presented the use of ctDNA, the liquid biopsy, to try to detect minimal residual disease and based on that, a, a trigger intervention to these patients with moderate or high risk early stage TMC. So basically, they did a very complex active ctDNA surveillance and this was double blind. <coughs> Excuse me. So they collected baseline ctDNA and three months until 12 months. And afterwards, it depends on different aspects that I will not make to make any comments now. But basically, they randomized if positive ctDNA, two to one, to receive pembrolizumab or observation. So very, very proof of concept study, very important in my opinion. So, so let's analyze the methodology and let's analyze the results. So they consider high risk triple negative breast cancer if new adjuvant chemotherapy with residual disease with positive axillary nodes or primary surgery with a tumor more than five centimeters and node positive or four or more nodes positive. Moderate risk was defined as new adjuvant chemotherapy and residual disease with no negative, sorry, with no uh, 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 nodes affected, or primary surgery with a tumor higher than 20 millimeters or axillary macroscopic lymph nodes. So based on this, 208 patients were registered and 261 patients continue to ctDNA surveillance. Here you have the results. So in total, 27.3% of patients, so 44 out of 161 patients, did have a positive ctDNA by 12 months time, time point. It was much higher in the high risk population, 56% much lower in the moderate risk population, 12%. So these 44 patients were randomized to receive pembrolizumab or control. However, at the time the patients were going to be included, metastatic disease was ruled out. And what did we observe? That the great majority of the patients with a positive CT DNA did have also metastatic disease at baseline. So this is why only five patients were basically or received basically pembrolizumab. So I think that two or three key considerations here, maybe for triple negative breast cancer, the time between the positivity to CT DNA and the appearance of a macroscopic metastasis is very, very short. 
So maybe, or we have to shorter the, uh, the, the, the time to do the, the liquid biopsy, or maybe these patients should done a baseline uh, assessment before entering in a trial like this. Which is very clear is that according to this trial, four out of five patients started treatment, one patient remains on treatment, the other four patients did have events, three of them recurrence, one of them adverse events. And what is more important, and according to the primary objective of this, was to observe the CT DNA clearance six months after starting pembrolizumab. None of these five patients did have a clearance after six months. So again, it's a minimal number of patients, but nevertheless, no even a signal of activity. What about the results in the control arm? Here you can see the data. The great majority of the patients did have a metastatic disease and four patients remain recurrent free. Of interest, all these four patients became CTDNA negative after initial positivity and two of them also CTNA positive afterwards. So again, I think it's difficult to interpret how these two patients remain recurrent free and how is it possible these patients to have negative CTNA after having CTNA positive uh, uh, a disease. So nevertheless, many things to be discussed in the future. So as a conclusion, I think that this trial is a proof of concept, but in triple negative breast cancer, we have to optimize the technique or we have to do different things. If we want this CTDNA, will valid to optimize therapy in the adjuvant setting. So just to try to conclude. So yesterday for clinical stage one and stage two triple negative breast cancer, the great majority of our patients did receive upfront surgery, followed by third generation adjuvant chemotherapy, taxing based with or without anthracyclines, with or without radiation therapy. Clearly today, the great majority of these, of these patients are treated with up from chemotherapy, followed by surgery with or without radiation therapy. And if PCR, these patients continue just with observation, if residual disease, these patients should be entering clinical trials or receive adjuvant capecitabine. With the data we have today, and this is my last slide, in my opinion, nothing new from San Antonio to change these conclusions, new adjuvant chemotherapy plus immunotherapy should be the best approach for stage two or stage three in the great majority of the patients. For, great, for stage one, we can decide if go for up from chemotherapy or up from uh, surgery. And if PCR, we should continue with immunotherapy according to Keynote 5 to 2. If residual disease, in my opinion, we should combine immunotherapy plus capecitabine. If not, immunotherapy at least should be given. I would like to stop here. I'm happy to the discussion afterwards. Thank you very much again for the invitation.